In the final section of this chapter, we want to talk about real versus ideal gases. And much like in the previous two sections, it's the outcomes that are important, or what they mean, not actually doing the math. And I'll show you an equation of Van der Waals, equation which corrects for non-ideal gases at the end of this section. But you won't actually be able to ask to, um, to solve it here. It's just, again, an idea of knowing what it means. So when we talked about the kinetic molecular theory, there are two major problems with the kinetic molecular theory. And the first is that it assumes the volume of the molecules themselves is zero. But in real life, molecules actually take up space. So this um, phenomenon can be especially noticed at high pressures. And the reason that it's especially noticed at high pressures is the volume of the molecules relative to the volume of the empty space or the volume of the gas is more significant. Here, it's mostly empty space. Now, if you had two or three times this many in here, the molecules take up more of the empty space. So at high pressures, this becomes um, especially noticeable. So since molecules do take up space, which is especially noticeable at high pressures, there needs to be a correction for the volume. And an ideal gas law does not take this into account. Another problem um, with the ideal gas law is that it assumes that collisions are perfectly elastic. So if X and Y hit each other with a certain amount of energy, they leave with that same amount of energy. But in actuality, gases and all molecules have attractive forces for each other. So if this uh, molecule is flying in this direction, it's not going to hit the wall of the container with quite as much energy because it's attracted to these other molecules, which means that the, the um, pressure exerted will be lower than predicted by the ideal gas law because the ideal gas law assumes that this will be elastic collisions and this will hit the wall of the container with all of the force. But due to these attractive forces, that's simply not the case. This is especially noticeable at low temperatures. At very high temperatures, these molecules have lots of energy and the effect of the um, attractive forces is minimized. However, at low temperatures, the, the molecules have less energy or are moving slower and the attractive forces are more noticeable. So this leads us to two corrections of the ideal gas law. First is a, a correction to the per, uh, pressure. We have to add a little bit because of these molecular attractions. So the pressure that's predicted will be a little bit lower than expected. So we have to add a little bit more. In the case of volume, we have to subtract a little bit. And we're subtracting a little bit because the volume of because of the volume of the molecules. This is called the Van der Waals equation. And what you'll notice is it has two terms in it, A and B. And you can look up these A and B terms in tables. So these are values for Van der Waals constants for some common gases. Now, you in some courses you are actually asked to actually solve this. Here you're not. Here you need to know the implications. Namely, that the pressure has to be corrected because the gas molecules have attractive forces and the volume needs to be corrected because the gas uh, molecules themselves take up some space. So this has been the gas law chapter.